The outbreak of coronavirus has turned the whole world upside down. The outbreak prompted the president to make a pronouncement that there should be a nationwide lockdown in response to the outbreak. The lockdown did not leave out the colleges. It disrupted the programs in terms of teaching and learning. As a result, the principals of Tibet colleges decided to come up with ways and means of supporting the students who are at home. The first broadcast of the lessons happened on the 15th of April, 2020. I therefore want to request all the students, all the lecturers, to commit themselves to watching these programs because these programs are meant for them. After each and every broadcasting, the lessons are sent to the website of DHET. They are also accessible on the website of the colleges. You don't need data to access that. I therefore want to lastly urge you, our students, our lecturers, to ensure that these programs are making an impact on these students, to prepare them for the examination. There is no more time left in the year 2020. Stay home, stay safe. Greetings. Uh, my name is Mr. Stienkamp and from Obert Tivet College and I will be presenting Financial Accounting N5, Module 3, specifically focusing on insurance claims. Now, there's an extract that you will be seeing on your screen that reads as follows. When Sipo Sitole arrived at his store on the morning of 19th April 2013, he found nearly every shelf and display rack empty. Thieves had broken in during the night and had stolen the entire inventory except for stock with a selling price of 9,600. So now I want you to circle the 9,600. Sitola's accounting record showed the following on the 19th of April, opening stock, sales, purchases, import duties, purchases, returns, and also sales returns. The first thing, uh, we are being told that the profit on normal sales is calculated at a cost price plus 80%. Now, when you look at our sales, when we do the calculation, the first thing is, let us first remember that SP equals to CP plus MU. Sales is made up of cost price plus, plus markup. Now we need to break down all these sales that's been given to us. Firstly, SIPO only accept normal sales as a return from clients. Number three, he had a sale on stock during March where he sold goods at a marked price less 20% that accounted to 54,720 of the total sales. Staff is allowed to purchase a stock at cost price plus 20%. These sales amount to 38,400. Now, the first thing we need to do, we need to calculate our normal sales. We'll see the total sales 230,190 less. We're gonna less number three, which is 54,720. And we're also gonna less number four, which is 38,400. Remember, this is your total sales, less your markdown sales, less your staff sales, and that's gonna give you a total of 137070, once you have subtracted those two. This is the total sales of 230,190, which is given to us, less the 54,720, which will be indicated on number three, 
And then we also need to subtract number four, which is the staff sales. You get now a total of 137,070. That's now, this would now be your, your normal sales. Now, take into consideration number two. SIPO only accept normal sales as return from, from clients, which means from here, we need to now subtract returns on normal sales, not on the total sales, but on, on the normal sales. So 137,070 minus, if you look at your returns, it's 18,540 minus 18,540, and that will give us 118530. Now, your normal sales equals to 118,520. Now, this is where we start to calculate our GP. Let me remind you, SP equals to CP plus MU. We are being given SP. We do not know what is the CP, but we have been given the MU, so once we give the MU, we'll be able to go back to calculate that and get our GP. So, number one says the normal sales is calculated at cost plus 80%. So, 118,530 multiplied by 80 over 180. Please remember, we're not calculating cost of sales but we want to find the GP amount. And that will give you 52680. The 52680, we just indicate that in bracket, so you would remember that that would be our, our GP. Now we're moving over to that part. Remember, we've got three kinds of sales. We've got normal sales, which I've dealt with. We've got markdown sales, which is also known as discounted sales. And we also got staff sales. Now moving over to the markdown sales. So that's the second part we're gonna calculate. Markdown sales, which is 54720. Now when you read number three again, he had a sale of stock during March and he sold this Mark price less 20%. Now, when it says less 20%, you had to get 100%. Now, you're selling less 20%, which means initially you're only going to get 80% of that sale. So, it would be times 100 divided by 80. The 80, I've just indicated to you how you get the 80. It is 100 less than 20% that you gave as a discount. And you're gonna get an amount of 68,400. Now, let's take a pause here. The 54,720, that is the actual sale. That's the actual amount that you have received. The 68,400, that is the anticipated sale that you should have got if you would not have sold uh, on a discount. So 68,400, now we need to calculate what is the cost of sales of that amount. So remember the original markup of the business here is um, 80% as it's been indicated there. The original markup, it's, it's 80%. Now we need to calculate cost of sales. So you're gonna multiply by 100, divide by 180, and that's gonna give us um, an amount of 38,000. Let's just indicate in bracket there so you should remember cost of sales. If you could remember what I said, selling price equals to cost price plus markup, now here we've got our original selling price, which is 54,720 minus our cost price of 38,000. The 54,720 minus the 38,000, which is the cost of sales from the previous step, that will give you an amount of 16,720. 
16,720, and that would be your, your GP. We have dealt now with the 54,720. Remember, that is our markdown sales. We have also now dealt with the normal sales. Now we've got to do the staff sales. And staff sales, you refer to number four. Staff is allowed to purchase stock at cost plus 20%. These amounts to 38,400. Now 38,400 multiplied by 20 over 120 equals to 6,400. And that's our GP. If you ever look at this, we've got GP from normal sales, GP from markdown sales, and then GP from staff sales. Add all these together. 52,680 plus 16,720 plus 6,400 and that will give you a total of 75,800. And that will be our profit and, and loss. I just want to draw attention to the following, the requirements that says, show the calculations of the claim presented to the company. Show all the calculations clearly indicate what is being calculated. So it's imperative that you have headings of what you, are being, what you are calculating. So if you are calculating staff sales, indicate star, uh, normal sales, markdown sales, or also staff sales, because it is a requirement according to this extract that I've given there. Okay, now once we have this, we're gonna now do our, our trading account. We have been now given our trading account opening stock, an amount of 57,600. The sales, do not forget that you need to subtract the sales returns. Purchases, you know that you need to subtract purchases returns. So our purchases, import duties, which is given to us there, 30,480. And we know this site will be sales, where we need to subtract our, our sales, sales returns. Our purchases, less our purchases returns, while you can st uh, subtract it, 181,440, subtract returns, 34,000, 320, I'm getting 147, 120, 147, 120, input duties is given to you. Now sales, remember, less sales returns. Sales, it's 230, 190, subtract returns of 18,540, it's 211, Two double one six five zero. You would see we have just calculated our profit and and loss. Profit and loss, of seventy five thousand eight hundred. Now, what we do not have, remember. This, the entire inventory was stolen, so you could not determine what was the value of the closing stock at that point in time. This is what you need to figure out now. So your closing stock, you're just gonna now balance out that account, and that's now gonna give you then the indication of the, of the closing stock. Let's do that together. 57,600 plus, 
147,120 plus 30,480 plus 75,800. 311,000. 311,000. On the debit side and also indicated on the credit side, then we subtract the credit side of 211,650, which gives me now closing stock of 99350, which means the value of the stock at the point of theft was 99,350. Now, if you could remember at the beginning of the lesson, I said you need to circle the 9,600 of the stock that was still um, not stolen, that was left behind. So you need to show, we've got 99,350, less the salvaged stock of 9,600, and that's the amount that then we're gonna present to the insurance company for a claim. So 99,350 subtract 9,600, and we get 89,700 then and 50. That is the amount that we're gonna now present to the insurance company for them to now pay, pay us out that amount of 89,750. I want us now to recap so we have a clear understanding of what we were doing. The first thing is we are being given total sales. Now, remember sales, it's sales, whether it's credit sales, cash sales, sales will always be captured as one amount. It will not be separated for you. Remove the, all the other sales that's been given. In this instance, you've got staff sales, staff sales 38,400, and markdown sales or discounted sales. So you can get now your normal sales of 137,070. Point number two of critical importance. You must be given an instruction that says where should you remove your returns. Some activities will tell you to remove the returns from the normal sales. Some activities will tell you to remove the returns on uh, total sales. So it's, you need to, because that will then affect your, your gross profit. Now, we... As per instruction, we subtracted the 18,540, which is the sales returns from our normal sales, as per instruction number two. We get now normal sales of 118,530. We calculate the GP, we have been told here, it's 80%. Now, 80 over 180. Many students make an error here, they try to calculate cost of sales, no. We are calculating GP, 80 over 180. If the markup was 10%, it will be 10 over 110. If it was 50%, it will be 50 over 150 in order for you to get the GP of 52,680. Markdown sales, I also want, would like you to block the 54,720, and I'll tell you just now why. Multiply by 100, divide by 80, because of if sold this less 20%, it gives you 68,400. Now, the 68,400 and the 54,720 are sales. This is original sales. That would have been expected sales if there was no discount of the 20%. Now, when you calculate your cost of sales in the next step, do not use the 54,000 of the actual sales, but you use the 54,000 at the end. You need to get your cost of sales first before you can subtract your cost of sales, your sales, cost of sales from your sales, which will give you then your GP. 68,400 multiplied by 100, divide by 180, gives me cost of sales of 38,000. Now I'm applying that methodology there. S actual sales, not anticipated sales, please. Actual sales, less 
cost of sales gives me 16,720. That is the gross profit. You might even get a loss, gross profit of the markdown sales. And the last calculation, your staff sales, it's 20%. 20 over 120 gives us now 64,000. We add GP from normal sales, GP from markdown sales, GP from staff sales, and it gives us 75,800. Now, once you've done the calculation, you now complete your trading account. Opening stock is always given to us. Remember, purchases less purchases returns, sales less sales returns, import duties, and then your gross profit, which we've just calculated, at the debit side, subtract it from the credit side, and now you know the value of your stock at the point of fire, the point of theft, whatever incident that, that occurred there. Now you put in a claim, you've got closing stock of 99,350, subtract salvage stock. This is the stock that was not stolen. Now you've got a claim that you launch with your insurer of 89,750. And that wraps up a portion of your module on insurance, insurance claims. Thank you very much. The outbreak of coronavirus has turned the whole world upside down. The outbreak prompted the president to make a pronouncement that there should be a nationwide lockdown in response to the outbreak. The lockdown did not leave out the colleges. It disrupted the programs in terms of teaching and learning. As a result, the principals of Tibet colleges decided to come up with ways and means of supporting the students who are at home. The first broadcast of the lessons happened on the 15th of April, 2020. I therefore want to request all the students, all the lecturers, to commit themselves to watching these programs because these programs are meant for them. After each and every broadcasting, the lessons are sent to the website of DHET. They are also accessible on the website of the colleges. You don't need data to access that. I therefore want to lastly urge you, our students, our lecturers, to ensure that these programs are making an impact on these students, to prepare them for the examination. There is no more time left in the year 2020. Stay home, stay safe.